Hello everyone, I am Mustafa. Today I am going to uh, present my course project uh, called Diagnosing Common Thorax Diseases from X-ray Images. So here is the outline. I will start with an uh, overview, of, overview of my project. Uh, I will share some related work uh, about the project. Uh, then we will continue with the problem and solution section. Then I will introduce the data set that I use in my project. And I will share the, the methods and methods that I use uh, throughout the project. And uh, in the end, I will share the results and uh, conclusions. So chest radiograph interpretation is crucial for detecting uh, thoracic disorders such as TB and uh, lung ca cancer, which impact millions of individuals each year across the world. This time-consuming procedure usually necess necessitates the use of specialist radiologists to read the pictures, resulting in diagnostic inaccuracy due to the tiring and a lack of uh, diagnostic skill in places where uh, radiologists are uh, not accessible. Deep learning algorithms have recently been able to attain expert level performance in uh, medical picture interpretation tasks, owing to the introducing of deep label data sets and uh, rest uh, network designs. Uh, for this uh, project, I use uh, the data set called Chest X ray 14. Uh, proposed by Wang et al. in 2017. The chest X-ray is one of the most widely used radiological tests for uh, lung disease, uh, screening and diagnosis. Uh, many contemporary hospitals picture arch uh, archiving and uh, communication systems capture and store a massive amount of X-ray imaging studies and the radiological reports. On the other hand, it remains unclear how a, a hospital size knowledge database, including uh, invaluable imaging methods, uh, can be utilized to uh, support data hungry deep learning paradigms in development of a uh, really large scale, high precision, uh, computer aided diagnosis systems. Uh, that's why one gets all created a database uh, for this process. Uh, I will apply numerous. Uh, CNN methods and uh, texture features uh, to this data set and compare uh, the results. Uh, the research of uh, Bahandri uh, et al. Uh, intends to develop a deep learning framework for studying lung phenomena and cancer. Uh, this paper presents two distinct deep learning strategies for evaluating the situation at hand. First one is a modified uh, AlexNet uh, called MAN uh, is presented as the first deep learning approach for classifying chest X-ray pictures into normal and uh, phenomenal classes. Uh, second approach uh, is uh, a deep learning project to use a combination of handmade and uh, learned features in the uh, MAN uh, to increase uh, lung cancer classification accuracy. On the other hand, the goal of the study of uh, Rahman et al. is to use digital X-ray pictures to diagnose bacterial and viral phenomena, uh, phenomena uh, automatically. Uh, it uses transfer learning uh, in four distinctive convolutional networks, which are uh, AlexNet, ResNet 18, uh, DanceNet uh, 201, and uh, SecuseNet. So our problem is uh, a categorical classification problem. And uh, furthermore, the data set contains pathological findings, which are often significantly small. And hence, it is harder to detect. And also, the main limitation is that uh, all proposed methods, uh, previous proposed methods, are evaluated on some small middle scale problems uh, of several hundred patients. And it remains unclear how well the current deep learning techniques scale up uh, to tens uh, of thousands of patient studies. Uh, luckily, uh, the data set uh, proposed by Ivan Gettel uh, is used uh, by uh, a lot of people. And 
uh, it makes it easy uh, to convert actually. And also uh, our data set is a bias and we need to do some pre-processing uh, method. Uh, in this project, I use CNN, transfer learning, texture features, and pre-processing techniques. The data set contains uh, over 100,000 images. Uh, the image size is uh, 1024 by 1024 from uh, 15 different uh, device classes. And it has the following features, which are bound effects information, case zoom, select information, and images. You can see a uh, view of my data set. So, as you can see, an image can contain more than one device, actually. So, here is the distribution of the images, and you can see uh, it's, uh, it needs to be resampled. So first, I will ignore some smaller cases, and then I will resample the data, and I will extract the uh, texture features using GLCM uh, for texture features, and I will apply mobile net and a mobile net with uh, weights with fine tuning weights actually. Uh, first, I will start a removal operation. I discard the uh, diseases. Uh, which are less than uh, 1,000 cases, and uh, we have left 13 diseases. Then I sample the data set with the weight of uh, 0.1, and you can see the new uh, data set. And I will, uh, I use uh, mobile nets. So the mobile net is a CNN architectural model uh, for image classification and mobile vision. There are other models as well, but what makes mobile net special is that it has very less computation power to run or apply transfer learning. This makes it a perfect fit for mobile devices, embedded systems, and computers without GPU or low computation efficiency, with compromising significantly with the accuracy of the results. It's also best treated with for web browsers as browsers have limitation on computation, graphic processing, and storage. Uh, mobile nets for mobile and embedded vision applications is proposed, which are based on a streamlined architecture that uses depth-wise several convolutions to build a lightweight deep neural network. Uh, two simple global high performance that efficient trade off in latency and accuracy are introduced. Uh, the core layer of mobile net is depth by separable features, named as depth by separable convolution. Uh, the network structure is another factor to boost the performance. Uh, finally, the width and the resolution can be tuned to trade off between latency and accuracy. Uh, on the right, you can see the, the architecture of mobile net. Uh, for the uh, mobile net uh, transfer learning, I use the image, uh, I use the weight from image net. Uh, I find uh, from these uh, rates. You can see the uh, mobile net architecture that I use my uh, project. I take the base uh, mobile net first, then I apply a global average pooling layer, uh, then a dropout layer, uh, then uh, the a dense layer comes. Uh, after dense layer, another dropout layer with uh, 0 0.5. And at the end, a uh, dense layer, which is the dense, uh, uh, the 13 categories. I apply a sigmoid activation function and I use cross, on, uh, cross entropy dot function. And the learning rate was 0 0.001 and the size is equal to 32. I use uh, an optimizer, early stopping, and learning rate scheduler. Uh, for GLCM, uh, GLCM is uh, a statistical method of examining textures that considers the spatial relationship of pixels uh, is the gray level corkerous matrix, also known as the gray level spatial dependent matrix. Uh, the GLCM functions categorize the texture of an image by calculating high power of them, a pair of pixels with specific values and in a specified spatial relationship of pure in an image. 
uh, creating a GLCM and then extracting statistical uh, measures from this matrix. I use six uh, statistics uh, shown in the table. And yeah. Uh, for each image, I got a vector of length four uh, for a uh, specific. And it means uh, for an image, it uh, has a 24 total features. And I will, I applied uh, MLP, a multi perceptron, and the uh, initial input layer is 24. After it, uh, there is a uh, 350 hidden layer. Uh, the next hidden layer has a size of 50, and the output layer has a, a 13 uh, size. I use sigmoid, uh, sigmoid activation function again, and a cross entropy, uh, cross -entropy loss function, uh, the learning rate 0 0.01, and a batch size 128, and an atom optimizer. Uh, throughout the project, I use accuracy, load, cross curves, and uh, mean. Uh, absolute error uh, methods. The mobile net results, as you can see, uh, the top curve is almost diagonal for each uh, for each uh, disease. And uh, here is the uh, accuracy, model accuracy. And these are the model loss and uh, mean, uh, mean absolute error. For mobile net. And you can see the uh, for each disease, uh, the test rate and the predicted rate. Uh, for GLCM, uh, we can see that at the beginning of the epoch training, uh, the model is uh, tends to learn uh, the data set and also uh, model loss and uh, MAE are consistent with each other. And this result is uh, from mobile net with transfer learning. Uh, the, although uh, train, uh, train accuracy is increasing, uh, test accuracy is not uh, increasing at all, which means uh, which means overfitting. Uh, but uh, the results are better than the uh, normal mobile net, actually. Uh, the rock curve is better than uh, the previous one. And also the model loss and uh, model uh, MLE uh, results are shown in the figure. And the uh, disease rates are uh, shown in the table, and you can see that uh, the results are better, much better than uh, the uh, mobile net without transfer learning. Uh, in conclusion, uh, mobile net is better than GLCM, and trans uh, second one is the uh, transfer learning uh, is effective, but it's important where the model is trained on. Uh, actually, I was waiting. Uh, a worse result because uh, the initial gates are from image nets and the image nets, uh, as far as I know, does not contain these kind of uh, diseases. Uh, but uh, it is better uh, at them. And also, GSCM is much faster than mobile because uh, the network is much smaller than that. Thank you for uh, listening.